you're curious about Trove, a new adventure game that's an open beta, you're in the right place. Let me run you through the basics of what you'll need to know. First off, let's talk about character creation. When you first hop into the game, you'll choose a tag. Basically, this is a name for your character. Remember, your tag will stick with you throughout your whole adventure, so make certain you pick a name you really want. There is an option to change your tag if you do feel that you've made a terrible mistake. You can hit escape, go to the store, and go to the goods tab, where you'll find the rename tag option. After you create your character, you'll be dropped into a tutorial area that will provide you with the basics of what you need to know. You'll find a barbershop to your right. This will allow you to change your character's appearance. There are a ton of options. Believe me, the first time I went through this, I'm like, does it ever end? This is a good thing though. Also, don't worry too much about this as you can craft your own barbershop and you can change your appearance at will. Once you've decided what you want to look like and proceed through the rest of the tutorial, you'll find yourself in an expansive zone with areas that have open plots with little question mark signs on them. If you go up to an empty one and hit E, you'll be able to place your cornerstone. The great thing about this system is that you can take your cornerstone with you anywhere that you want to go. You just find an empty cornerstone plot and you replace it. It will remove the previous one you placed and move it to the new location. This makes it easy to adventure, get loot, and craft new goodies. To build on your cornerstone, just hit tab, select the block you want to use, and left click to place it. You can also remove blocks by holding right click down. If you build on your cornerstone, no one can break down what you've built. But if you build in the world, it won't be permanent. You can also attain more blocks by right clicking in the world areas that aren't owned by someone else or are not dungeon areas. Now you can go on an adventure from there, but there are a few things you may want to know. If you hold down H, you will be teleported to the hub world. The hub world is a safe zone that provides you with access to all kinds of things, like featured club worlds, adventure portals, a community chest and rejuvenation station, trading post, barbershop, and the class changer. Speaking of the class changer, let's fast forward and move over to each of the classes and give you some combat tips. There are currently six classes to choose from. The first is the knight. The knight's passive is retribution. Upon taking damage charges, the knight's next attack will have added power. You'll also have access to charge, smash, and iron will as your ultimate attack. The gunslinger's passive is lucky shot. Randomly, when dealing damage, this fully charges the gunslinger's next charge shot. You also have access to blast jump, charge shot, and run and gun as your ultimate attack. The Fey Trickster's passive is Ego Blast. If the Trickster hasn't taken damage recently, it'll charge your basic attacks. You'll also have access to Glitter Bomb, Blink, and Fairy Dane as your ultimate attack. The Dracolite's passive is Firewalking. This allows you to run through lava without being harmed by that much. You'll also have access to Spitfire, Burnt Offering, and Avatar of Flame, your ultimate attack. The Neon Ninja's passive attack is Shining Star. Hit enemies so you can gain shurikens that you can throw while in stealth mode. You'll also have access to Shadow Flip, Stasis Blade, and Final Technique as your ultimate attack. And finally, the most recent addition and the most tasty one, the Candy Barbarian. His gumdrop passive drops rage-inducing sour candy when he's attacked. You'll also be able to use Sugar Crash, Vanilla Swirl Wind, and his ultimate ability, Ice Crom Crone. Remember to equip items in the Q, R, and T slots, like flasks and grenades. Watch your power as your attacks rely on this. Also use the rejuvenation stations at your cornerstone and other cornerstones to keep your flask replenished. To improve your mastery rank, you'll need to level up all of these classes and also unlock recipes and collect everything in the game like mounts, pets, costumes, and more. So go out in the world, explore, and collect things. The next thing I want to go over is crafting. There are all kinds of things you can craft in Trove, and I could probably make a video just covering this topic alone. But to go over the gist of it all, there's a deconstructor that will allow you to break down items. You can also find ingredients out in the world. You'll utilize these ingredients to create new blocks, items for your house, and items for your character. There are all kinds of crafting tables, and each of them allow you to craft different types of items. For instance, a workbench will allow you to create items like tables and robotic sparring partners and more. The main thing I recommend is going out and adventuring because you'll need a lot of ingredients to make items you want. Also, making friends is a great way to trade for some of the more rare items. 
On the friend's note, socializing is a big aspect of the game as the largest player-owned worlds are club worlds. These are large worlds that you can expand and build with your club friends. To allow friends to build, just type slash club promote player's name. And if they ever get a little out of hand, you can remove their building access by typing slash demote or kick player name. I've seen people building all kinds of things from corgi racetracks and roller coasters to companion cubes and castles. I hope this video provides you enough information to get you started in Trove. Don't forget, every day you log in, you'll get a daily reward. So make sure to log in and get your goodies. See you in Trove, and don't forget to enjoy the game. Margaret signing off.